Good morning, everyone. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about adoption. I love, love, love this, and I believe this lesson is going to boost our confidence in the God that we serve. If you haven't scored, take a few moments, get in God's presence, and let's come together in His Word. Our joke for the day is right here. And now I want us to pray. Father, we love you and thank you. Thank you for this word today, for this lesson, for this revelation of who you are. And I pray that it would permeate our heart and understanding that we can walk with boldness and confidence, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 today. And it says, And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Okay, so first of all, I want to take us all the way back to Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, because I believe that that's going to help give more understanding of what we're talking about today. Verse 4 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Say, adoption of sons. We were all slaves to sin before we came to the Lord. We were hopeless, but Jesus came and redeemed us and saved us out of the slave market of sin and adopted us and made us sons of God. We weren't naturally born into this. We were adopted, or as Jesus put it, born again into the family of God. Since we're on the topic, let's talk about adoption. Once upon a time in a far away land, there lived a worthy king He loved music and filled his majestic kingdom with the sounds of singing. Music made him so happy, but he became lonely and he wanted to share his kingdom with a queen. As the story would have it, our king was attending a symphony of worship when he looked across the room and saw her. This beautiful princess was to become his queen. They had a wonderful life, and together they built a beautiful kingdom. She loved teaching children, and he music. In the process of time, however, they became lonely. Something was missing. Their hearts longed for a little prince or a princess. The years began to roll by, and their desire for a child became stronger. Then, after much prayer and thought, they decided to search for a child who needed a royal family. It was a long and difficult search, but lo and behold, the perfect little prince was born several kingdoms away. The king and queen quickly gathered up their things and with much excitement and anticipation went to claim their little prince, Jack. He was everything they could have ever asked for and more, His smile melted their hearts and his love completed the royal family. They can't imagine what life was like before Prince Jack entered the palace. And Prince Jack will always know that he was not only loved, but especially chosen by the king and queen. And they all lived happily ever after. Abba is used to describe God. It's an Aramaic affectionate word for father or daddy, and it's used in the intimacy of the family circle. Every dad has a name. In fact, my dad ranks as one of the best out there. His name was Clifford Eugene Diller Sr. (laughs) I'm not sure how he would respond if I said, hey, Clifford Eugene Diller Sr., or even, hey, Mr. Diller, but if I called him daddy. 
Oh boy, that's all it would take to get his attention. When we use the word Abba Father, we speak this emotional expression with confidence as sons of God. In our verse today, it says that he has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Matthew 10 and 19 says, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father in you. He prompts us to speak. Have you ever been in prayer and someone came to mind to pray for? And I'm just going to tell you, don't ever shrug that off. Because it very well could be that God, your Abba Father, is prompting your prayers. It's that spirit praying through you. Romans 8.15 says, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship, by whom we cry, Abba Father. Sonship means that everything our Heavenly Father has also belongs to us. As a son or a daughter of the Most High God, we can cry out to our Heavenly Father anytime fear or anxiety or depression or discouragement hits. It has no power over us when we recognize who we are and who He is. He is our Abba Father. Mark Batterson wrote in The Circle Maker, God is bigger than our biggest problems. Our real problem, though, is our small view of God. Isaiah 9, 6 speaks of the coming Messiah as our wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. Everlasting father means he's never going to leave you. He's never going to abandon you. He will guide you and direct you. He will provide for you. And sometimes, yes, he will correct you. But always, 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 he will love you. From slaves to sons, he brought us out of the slavery of Egypt to enjoy the promised land as the sons of God. John Newton, the man who wrote the most popular and famous hymn, Amazing Grace, knew how to remember this. He was an only child whose mother had died when he was only seven years old. He became a sailor and went out to sea at 11 years old. As he grew up, he became the captain of a slave ship and had an active hand in the horrible degradation and inhumane treatment of the slave trade. But when he was 23, on March the 10th, 1748, when his ship was in imminent danger of sinking off of the coast of Newfoundland, he cried to God for mercy and he found it. He never forgot how amazing it was that God had received him as bad as he had been. To keep it fresh in his memory, he fastened across the wall over the fireplace mantel of his study the words, of Deuteronomy 15 and 15. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. If we keep fresh in our mind what we once were and what we are now in Jesus Christ, we will do well. We are sons and daughters of our heavenly Father. God bless, I hope you have a wonderful day. Good morning, kiddos. It's Mima again. And I think today I'm going to tell you a story about what happened whenever I was two years old and I got lost. Uh, we lived way back in the country and my great uncle Earl lived with us and I loved him so much. And he called me Boogan, that was my nickname. And uh, he uh, had planted a big field of corn out behind our house quite a ways and he would come home for lunch. He would walk home for lunch and my mother would have his lunch ready and I would meet him at the door and I'd come running out because I could walk good at that time. And I remember uh, he would say, hey, Boogan, and I would go running up to him and give him a big hug around the legs. And um, after lunch this one particular time, I wanted to go with him to the cornfield. And he said, no, Boogan, you have to stay here. You need to stay home and I'll see you this afternoon. Well, I waited till he got out of the distance away and I got to missing him so bad. I thought, I guess I thought to myself, 
well, I'm just gonna follow him anyway. So I did. I saw where he went and I trudged down the, the road to the corn patch and um, I didn't see him, but I kept walking down uh, the row of corn. I thought, well, I'll, he'll show up in just a little bit. And it was about time for my nap uh, right, right after lunch. You know how it is, you get kind of sleepy. So being only two years old and not knowing any difference, I laid down in the corn patch and I went sound asleep. And when Uncle Earl came in for the afternoon and his work was done, he had been chopping the corn, I mean the weeds around the corn. He came home and there was no boogan around anywhere. And he was so used to seeing me run out and look for him. He says, Mary, that was my mother's name, Mary, where's Bukin? And she said, well, I thought she was with you. He said, no, she's not with me. I told her not to come. And mother and Uncle Earl looked around everywhere. They looked under the beds and in the closets, behind the couch, and even under the house. And there was no boogan. So they, it was starting to get later in the evening and uh, there were panthers, big black panthers and um, bears and everything back in the woods in those days. And uh, they were frightened. So they sent someone to go to the schoolhouse, which was through the woods about a mile away and ring the big bell and that always alerted all the neighbors in the neighborhood that there was something drastic that had happened. And so they all came running to the schoolhouse and whoever took the message to them told them that I was lost and they couldn't find me. And I will tell you the rest of it tomorrow. <laughs>